time? 2002. The place? Downtown. Portland, Oregon. The event? Rumble at the Roseland. Presented by the Full Contact Fighting Federation. And now, here are your commentators, The Natural, Randy Couture, and Rick Franklin. Welcome, fight fans, to the second edition of the Rumble at the Roseland. An absolutely packed crowd here at the Roseland Theater tonight for a mixed martial art or pancreation event brought to you by Peninsula Park Wrestling Club with the able assistance of the Full Contact Fighting Federation and Mr. Chael Sonnen. So you don't have to listen to me drone along all night. They have spared no expense to bring you the finest in color commentary. Right here, standing to my right, none other than the UFC ultimate fighting champion of the world at the heavyweight division, Gresham Zone, Randy the Natural Tour. Tell us what we're going to see tonight, Randy. Well, tonight we should see some great bouts. There's 10 fights on the card. The first two fights are Class B pancreation. You'll see the fighters wearing protective shin guards, and there'll be open hand strikes on the feet and on the ground. Uh, the Class A pancreation for the last eight fights, there's a full contact event with no shin guards and full striking on the ground in the standing position. Should be great fights. Okay, now, I was down in the locker room. The guys are getting ready right now. We're going to see some lightweights coming out first. Some of these guys train at your gym, Performance Quest. Wind us up for some of these lightweights. I think there's going to be some great fights in all the divisions tonight. The light heavyweight battle belt is on the line tonight for Full Contact Fighting Federation. I think every fight should be highly contested. It should be a great fight. What are you doing here tonight? You're defending your world held the ultimate heavyweight fighting championship in seven days. When are you going down to Vegas to, to get ready for that? I actually leave uh, on Monday afternoon for Vegas. I'll be down there all week. Uh, the fight's Friday night. Uh, the hay is in the barn, as they say. Okay. Let's turn it over to our ring announcer, Mr. Kevin Keeney. Standing to my left. In the blue corner, a brown body specialist, standing 5 feet, 7 inches tall. He went in at 145 pounds. He is with the Southern Oregon Ground and Pound team out of Medford, Oregon. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome J.T. To my right, in the red corner, a penetration fighter, standing five feet, eight inches tall. He weighed in at 145 pounds. He is trained by Dennis Hallman, our team victory. Welcome, please, from Olympia, Washington, the Apostle Paul. Yeah! Oh, be very fit. These guys move like grease light, and this should be a great fight. Got a little stare down going to the center ring here. Oh, absolutely, the ground pounder, Mr. Thomas, is going to go for some wrestling moves. Level change there by JT, almost level change right into the kick there. Look, Paul looking for the top. Oh, there's the shot. Paul recovering, though. He's doing a good job. He took the shot. He got a little stunned there. But I see as soon as he hit the ground, he brought his legs up and was defending himself. So to that's pull that, right. that got Matt Lillen off his back, right? For so Matt sure. Call a, call a fight? For sure. If he'd, have, if he'd have laid there days for a second and not really defended himself, the fight could have been over. Very nice shot by JT. Well, that kind of surprised me because I thought JT was just kind of feigning the boxing skills looking for a takedown. Well, it looked the same to me, too, and sometimes you fake that shot, the guy drops his hands thinking you're shooting a takedown, and he's open to be popped. Yeah, I suppose particularly if you have a wrestling background of notorious sort. Nice shot to the head from the top position by JT here. Paul Morris working there, trying to pass. JT's passing, trying to pass that leg here. A little uppercut inside there. We got a little butterfly move going here on the bottom from uh, Paul the Apostle Morris. He There's doesn't get it. Guard now, full guard by Paul, but JT stacking him against the fence. And it looked like Paul was trying to time those shots to land a knee 
and catch JT as he came in, but he dropped his hands a little bit, and JT landed a really nice, straight right hand. Well, look at that camera angle we got there. We got cameras from every angle. There's not a bad seat in this house. No, there sure isn't. Well, I don't think there's a seat in this house. I take that back. It is standing there's room only. There's but JT's got to watch his arm. He's got to watch his arm here. He's getting an arm bar. He let him crawl up. Oh, he sniffed it. That was a nice job of countering that arm bar. He was nearly in big trouble there. Is that exactly the technique one wants to use to counter the arm bar? Well, it, it, it generally spend a lot of energy trying to pull out of the arm bar there with those gloves on. Sometimes that can apply the, the crank to your arm and your elbow by doing that. You're much better off crawling back through his legs and stacking him up and alleviating the pressure on the arm, but whatever works, you know. Again, he's got to watch those hips. Paul Morris doing a good job on the bottom, working those hips out. Oh, good. almost a triangle attempt there. JT, really, you got to be careful, not get too aggressive and get out of position here. Paul Morris doing a real good job from bottom. JT trying to pass, trying to work up. Paul doing a good job of holding him off and landing some strikes. Well, it looks like kind of Paul Scott did the worst of it, but he's threatening to put it away. If he can secure a good cross side position and trap him against the fence, it could be a bad day for Paul Morris. But Paul's working really hard not to let that happen and being real active on the bottom, which is what you need to do. It looks like JT's slowing down a little bit here. He spent some energy, certainly, trying to keep position and pass. Well, I think some of those arm bars in the triangle choke attempts got him a little flustered, or at least cautious. Now he raises up, spends a little more energy. And he's picking his shots a little bit better from the top now, JT is. Paul oh, still working those legs up. He watched those legs crawl up his back. Working that hip out, looks for the arm bar again. Here it comes. JT shortening those arms, bringing them back into his side. Watch the triangle choke attempt here. Not he's sure he's gonna get it. No, he's got his head out. There, he did a nice job of countering. He felt it coming a little bit that time and countered it. Very active fight. These guys are really getting after it. Now, he can't grab the cage. It looks like he's doing that. Now, no, Matt, Matt disciplines him and the cans come off. Now, JT can't grab the cage to trap Paul, but Paul can grab the cage and move himself and, and try and better his position and stay off the cage. That's okay. It's just locking in the cage to trap an opponent, to stalemate or hold an opponent that's illegal. Again, JT trying to raise up and rain down some shots. Paul tying up those hands. Paul working those hips out again, trying to climb up for that armbar again. JT starting to figure it out. He's trying to start to cover and stack early. Right yeah, there oh, it is. Pull it out. Pull it out just in time. Guys, nice. now he's got that cross side position. Paul could be in trouble here. No, he's working back to half guard. He should JT. be throwing some punches here, shouldn't well, he? Well, he's the trying top, to secure JT. position first, though. You gotta, he's got to play the position game before he throws punches. He gets too careless and comes right back in the guard, which is what happened anyway. But. There's the end of the first round. Great first round. Both guys working hard. The submission attempt by Paul Morris, very effective. JT is lucky to get out of that first one, doing a better job of seeing them coming now. And, and JT landing the better shots. Had the nice shot that, that, that knocked Paul down and then right at the start of the first round. Tough fight to call. I think that shot is gonna weigh heavy in the judge's mind for that first round. The first round will probably go narrowly to JT Thomas. Okay, we don't know who you're rooting for at home, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put Randy Couture in the red corner. Give us 10 seconds of advice for... I think uh, Paul needs to be a, a little more, lower his level a little bit, try and land his kicks and his punches on his feet. Watch for that takedown attempt. Try and time that knee. He's doing the right thing on his feet, but he's gotta keep his hands up and protect himself. He's gotta be more active on the bottom, try and get back to a neutral or a top position. Okay, let's go to the wrestler's corner out of the uh, Southern Oregon ground of pound, JT Thomas. What is your advice? JT's doing a great job. Fake those shots, keep him guessing. Land those shots if he drops his hands. Try and put him back on the ground and control him against the fence on the ground. He's doing a good job from there. He's gotta be careful not to overextend himself and give up a submission. It only takes one mistake to end the fight. 
Well, I think JT's probably the more experienced fighter, but the wrestler's taking him to the ground. Does Paul have to be on top in the judge's car to at least show something to win this fight? Not necessarily. Those those submission attempts weigh in the judges' minds. They they see those. Those are very technical things. Those exhibit some control even from the bottom position. But I think he can't spend the whole round on the bottom. He's got to work to get to a different position and, and establish more dominance. Full Contact Fighting Federation brings you some pretty school judges. We have Billy Francis, Dave Sandoval, and Joel, the Godfather Supernaut, all well versed in mixed martial arts. There's the front kick. Timed that well, went right under the, the, the right strike. And Paul Morris and JT gets the takedown, this time avoiding the guard, at least for the time being. We have an opportunity to punch from the top there. Is there a game now he's that? working for the knee mount. He works that knee mount in and gets a good position. He can strike well from this knee mount position. JT doing a better job here so far controlling. Now he's trying to work. Paul still working those legs, trying to work that knee in, use those feet and work back to a guard or a half guard position. Here comes the half guard right here. There's the half guard position. Now he's gonna force, force the hip out, to try and work the full guard. Here comes the full guard right here, posting that hip. There's your full guard position right there. Now let's see, he's back into open mat. He's got a little more room to maneuver. Let's see if he can do something from the bottom. Boy, you think Paul would like to be on top for a little bit of this exchange. Sure he would. Now there's the hip coming out. JT extended that hand to try and cover his mouth. Got a little extended. We're going for a arm bar. Yeah. Didn't get it, but I got to get a few good punches in nevertheless. That's for sure. I think Paul would be, be smart to get his feet in on, on JT's hips and try and push away, create some space, create a scramble, maybe get back to his feet or back to a top position. Well, coming up in about uh, five minutes, our main event, Steve Van Fleet and Mike Mills. 190 pounders. In the meantime, JT Thomas, Paul Morris, trading leather. And it appears to be going to the judge's card. We got a little blood coming out. It looks like maybe the nose of JT Thomas. Doesn't look to be serious. I think one of those punches from the bottom in the armbar attempt might have hit him on the nose and caused his nose to bleed a little bit. Paul still working, you know, being active from the bottom. Oh, here we go. There's an armbar attempt to get him, but JT's seeing them coming now. He's countering them nice, seeing those coming. Paul now is, needs to really work hard to get back to a neutral or standing position. A lot of wrestlers coming out in JT Morris. It looked like he had the cradle position there. Phil Cutbrill thought he was scoring points, but it doesn't happen here. Yeah, he's still controlling the fight of being, being doing a good job of countering the submission attempts and staying on top. Scoring points with those short choppy punches. I get a little blood from JT Thomas. Uh, Matt yeah. Lillian stops it. We're going to the doctor here. And we're going to check out the bloody nose. I don't think it's anything real serious, but going to have the doc take a look at it, make sure he didn't break his nose seriously, and try and stop a little of that bleeding. And this is good for Paul. It gives him a chance, first of all, to stand back up and start on his feet. And second of all, he gets a chance to catch his breath a little bit. See if he can get something working here and get back into the second round. There's no real harm done, just another safety measure uh, that uh, happens in uh, Class A or B pancreation and uh, Full Contact Fighting Federation makes sure that there's no uh, ill harm to anybody. Well, you see bloody noses in lots of sports. This sport's no different. There's a nice, nice couple of nice punches. And Paul Moore scoring some points now. Oh, nice shot by JT, and that's exactly what he needed to do there. Yeah. Paul Morris is on him like white on right. He was landing some nice shots. Well, Paul Morris would have done a lot better to sprawl and keep in the stand-up position. JT needed to be on the ground. Sometimes it's hard when you're really trying to focus and punch somebody. You forget about the takedowns and you walk right into them. Paul's got to try that open guard and push away and get back to his feet. That's where he's going to score and dominate and get back in this fight. Well, we don't have the bout time on the monitor, but we're going to the judges' card. That's my prediction. 
I think uh, you're right there. I don't think this fight's going to end soon. If, unless JT makes a big mistake and gets caught with one of those submission attempts, I think we're going to the full distance. And All if right. it stays in this position, I think JT's going to win this fight on a close decision. And you've been three for three. I'm not going to bet against you. Again, another sellout crowd here at the Roseland. You know, the equivalent of the headset this time, we can hear ourselves talk. <laughs> if I take the headset off, I don't think I can hear anything. Yeah, the headsets are got in the last show. I couldn't hear half the stuff you were saying. Again, JT doing a little better job of staying active on top here. He does not want this fight to be stood back up. Paul's got to, in my opinion, work a little harder to get to a neutral position and get off of that bottom. Again, well, climbing with the arms. There's a triangle attempt. JT countering and passing. JT doing a nice job there. After he kind of figured out the timing, and there's the buzzer right there. There's the fight. We're going to go to the judges' cards now. Again, the bloody nose on JT, but really not a factor. We're going to go back to our bit, sixth bout of the evening. Jacob Porst and Eddie the Bathroom Ellis went down to the locker room, talking to the two guys. They're trading uh, strategies on the next fight. They're sitting there sparring, figuring out how who hit who. We're hopefully not trading any of those bathroom tactics. <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, I think they were talking about who was buying who dinner this evening. <laughs> That was probably the bet in this amateur card. And I think this fight had to go to J.T. Thomas. He established the dominance on top. He had a nice takedown. I think if Paul could have kept this fight on his feet, he had a real good chance of scoring good points and, and winning. He had great submission attempts and I think had his chance early to really catch J.T. when he didn't really know what was going on. But J.T. kind of figured out his style and felt the submissions coming in the later in the round, first and second round, and, and uh, Paul was unable to catch him. And so even though he was being active and, and really demonstrating good skills, I think the control of the fight had to go to J.T. Yeah, Thomas. Yeah, well, my early money was on Paul the Apostle Morris, but I think you're right. We have a split decision. <laughs> Judge Dave Sandbell scores it. J.T. Thomas. <laughs> Judge Billy Francis scores it. Paul Morris. Head judge, the Godfather, scores it for the winner out of the blue corner, Jay T. I gotta tell you, JT, my early money was on Paul. But you pulled it out. Okay. I figured I got more takedowns, so that would let me somewhere with a lot of good strikes. Well, he threw some real stuff at you, and then he had some arm locks that looked, looked like the triangle hold, and you pulled it out. Yeah, I put most of his stuff. It was real tough on bottom there. Okay, we're gonna go to Paul. What are your thoughts on the fight? Uh, he's a tough guy, you know. He's a good fight. He made a couple mistakes, and. You know, he was able to capitalize, I was able to capitalize on a couple of his mistakes, but it's a good fight, it's a close fight. 
Horrendous opinion. I thought that was a great fight. You saw a lot of great skills from the bottom. A lot of great takedown skills. That was a fantastic, very competitive fight. Great job, guys. And we always ask the same question. A fight of this caliber is equal. Are we looking for a rematch, guys? We'll have to see. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds like a good idea. Okay. When we get the rumble at the Rosa 3, maybe we'll see J.T. Thomas call the Apostle Morris hook it up again. Okay, we're going to our main event. It's happening in about two minutes.